Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass here, and welcome to Pumpkin Eater, which is a horror visual novel about a rotten child that has a pumpkin for a head. Nobody knew how it happened. A boy, barely reaching double digits in years, was lying dead in the driveway. Gray and red pulp was painted everywhere. Back the car up! Back the car up already! How did he get under there? Laying down to draw. Some freak force of nature. I'm trying, woman! An innocent life was taken too soon and too violently. Was it the will of some cruel god? A woman ran to the body, attempting to reattach fragments of the jaw back into the skull. One figure jumped out of the car in pursuit, while the other was frozen in place outside. She had watched the full event unfold in front of her. Baby, speak to me, please! He's dead! No, he's not. Look, he's still moving. Don't you hear him crying? You've gone mad. You've gone deaf. We need to save our son. There's still help left. Drive him to the hospital. His brains are all over the pavement. He has already left this world. No, no, he hasn't. You're a liar. Help me. But, but... Now, if you care about me and your children, you can't stay out here like this. Bring him inside before the neighbors come. We'll deal with this later. It's okay. It's okay. You can hug me tighter, darling. We, we didn't mean it. He's still alive. Mommy? What's going on? Don't worry. It was just a little accident. But everything's gonna be okay, I promise. We should replace his head. Quick! Our garden! A pumpkin should be the best size. The perfect nuclear family, torn apart, their lives would forever be changed. Peter, Peter Pumpkin Eater, had a wife but couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell, and there he kept her very well. So the game's description actually mentions, like it specifies this, that this is a medically accurate game. For whatever reason, we'll find out why. The mother stood panting, admiring her creation, webbing off any blood from her hands onto her apron. It was a little crude, yes, but it worked better than she expected. Outside, the father stared into the sky while the daughter couldn't look away from the driveway mess. Her head hurt from crying her heart out. It's going to rain soon. They'll wash everything away. As if nothing happened. You look kind of like Bruce Wayne, and that makes me kind of sad and upset. Are we really not going to do anything? I'll... I'll think of something. Daddy's tougher than you think. For now, humor your mother by going along. I'll be hosing down the driveway. I'm scared. I hate this. The father reassuringly patted her on the shoulder. Though he was a man of few words, the father did love his wife. But most importantly, he loved his image. I'm pretty sure this is a bad look, no matter how you... How you shake this. He didn't want his family to be branded as miscreants. They had just committed vehicle manslaughter. There had to be a way of disposing of the body. Dinner is ready, you two. Please come inside. The two were greeted by the son, who was sitting in Grandpa's old wheelchair. The most bizarre sight, however, was a pumpkin in place of a human head its face carved into a welcoming grin. We could still see the remnants of the original crushed head within the holes. See? The head looks just like him! I mean, if your son's Jack Skellington. He said he likes his chair, but wishes it wasn't so squeaky. Dear, could you do me a favor and purchase some oil tomorrow? Oh, of course. Well, everyone, don't just stand there catching flies. Let us wash our hands and begin the dinner prayer so we can eat. There was little talk at the table. What was there to say anyway? Despite the gloomy atmosphere, the mother was unusually lively. Here comes the airplane. She was spoon-feeding him. The daughter grimaced at her, shoving mashed potatoes into the son's mouth. The girl looked at the father for her guidance, but he did not return her gaze. The daughter focused her attention back to the food on her plate. It smelled good, but the meat resembled an awful lot like her brother's... 
she dry heaved. After soundly washing the dishes with her mother, the daughter headed straight to the bed. She had no energy left in her. Oh, great. It's rude leaving your brother at the table, you know. He's... He's going to sleep with me? Of course! Why wouldn't he? You two have always shared the bedroom. <sighs> Why is he so... Hard to move? His joints are all locked up. I swear he was much more relaxed this afternoon. Yeah, they'll do that. Using all of her strength, the grumbling mother laid the son in his bed. She first tucked in the son, then the daughter, making sure to kiss each of their foreheads. Sweet dreams, you two. Good night, Mom. With a flick of the switch, the room fell into darkness. Even with the daughter's back turned, she knew those carved eyes were boring into her. Have a good day at work. Remember what I've told you. Dear. That is final. Wake up. It's time for school. You're not gonna take it to school, are you? Her brother was still laying in bed, so it was a nightmare after all. As per usual, the mother tied the daughter's bow. Blue, her favorite color. Your brother needs to stay at home for a while, so he can recover from his injuries. Listen, whatever you do, don't tell anyone what happened yesterday. It'll be our family's little secret. Do you understand? Okay. I'm glad you're so well behaved. Mommy and Daddy are trying their best despite our predicament. The girl shuffled off towards the school bus, completely bewildered at the mother's nonchalant attitude. After waving the daughter goodbye, the old woman returned to the house. Only the mother and son remained. Thankfully, his body had loosened up again, so it was easier to carry him out of bed and into the wheelchair. Don't get so full of yourself. You'll still have to study at home. Oh, don't give me that look either. You know puppy dog eyes are my weakness. Today was typically the day she spent cleaning the entire house. Despite her being a stay-at-home mother, it was a full job taking care of the estate, not to mention her family. She pulled out the vacuum cleaner. Several hours of busy work would be good to take her mind off of yesterday's events. Vacuuming, vacuuming around my rotting sun. Are you thirsty? Would you like me to bring you a drink? Bring me some embalming fluid. You're not. That's fine. If you need anything, just call for me and I'll be there in a jiffy. It was a lovely day today, and her son could use some fresh air. The mother pushed him out to the veranda, beyond the house. It faced the family's pumpkin patch, so no nosy neighbors could see him. It's really specific you're growing pumpkins, of all things. Humming, the mother entered a comfortable cleaning rhythm, letting all the worries slip away. The sky suddenly opened up. The mother was glad for the sudden rain. The pumpkin patch desperately needed it. Wait, her son was still outside! The mother dragged him inside and threw several towels on him. She pressed against him, drying him as fast as she could. What a fool she was. Taking him outside was a, really was a bad idea. She promised herself she wouldn't slip up like that again. Oh dear, oh dear, clothes are soaking wet. I can't have you catching a cold. I'm going to have to change them, if that is all right with you. Dinner was again silent. Usually the daughter was the chattiest, bragging forever about what she had learned in school or in her books that day. Now she was poking her stew. It takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. The daughter refuses to respond. Huffing an annoyance, the mother turned her attention to her husband. Your son and I had a great time together. He was very quiet, but he completed his required reading. I consider that great progress. I'm heading to the bar. Dear, but we haven't finished yet. I'll be back soon. After five bottles. And by bottles, I mean the entire bar stash. Goodness, what has gotten into everyone? After dinner and its cleanup ended, the mother and daughter went their separate ways. The mother fell fast asleep, 
but in the daughter's bedroom. The girl was looking for any sign of life in her brother. Pale skin, dried blood around his neck, and a burgundy discoloration in the arms and hands. It just wasn't human. She reached out for his arm. Touching her brother was a familiar occurrence. Play fighting. Sharing food. She interacted with him as any sibling would. Even if two had spent hours in snow, she had never touched a person so... cold before. Well, the mom said he would get a cold. The daughter shrunk back. She lacked the heart to continue calling him her brother. The figure tucked gently into the bed wasn't it. Without a word, she pulled the covers over the body. Day two. It's school time. Please get dressed. When the daughter awoke, she found the body back to leering at her. The blanket must have slipped off through the night, and covering the head once more. A fly landed on the pumpkin. Hello, who is this? Yes, I am the mother. Yes, ma'am, I assure you everything is fine with my son. He's been feeling a little under the weather lately. Or should I say, under the ground soon. Thank you. Goodbye. The teacher on the phone sounded incredibly displeased. Timeliness and attendance has always been one of the family's virtues, so the mother was quite embarrassed. In addition, the mother felt guilty for not informing the teacher about her son's absence ahead of time, but her husband kept instructing her not to speak about her son's accident. The father did not return that night. To help alleviate the awkwardness, the mother attempted some small talk. So, how was your day today? Learn anything fun? Kind of. Was dinner to your liking? You need to eat your veggies to grow big and strong. I guess. Your brother was telling me a funny story today, about how you both accidentally broke a vase by playing tag. You were so horrified, you ran out of the house and climbed a tree to hide. He tried to save you by climbing the tree, but ended up getting stuck there too. You two must have been up there for an hour by the time your father and I came home from the grocery store. I swear, you kids are always up to mischief whenever your parents are out of the house. The mother chuckled and spoon-fed some more broccoli to the sun. The house was starting to smell. It was musty, like meat starting to spoil. The daughter knew exactly what was causing that odor, and it made her stomach churn. After dinner... We can put on the radio. The Lone Ranger might be on. You like cowboys, don't you? No, not really. I'm heading to bed. Fine, then. Your brother and I will enjoy the program without you, Miss Grumpy Pants. Day Triple The mother's first task of the day after seeing the daughter and her husband off was to attend her son. She had noticed before, but certain areas of the child's skin were discolored. It had the same green and blue hues of a bruise, but the eerie marbling patterns were nothing like she had seen before. At least it was faint. Were you playing with markers? Pulling out a sponge, she washed the spot, but refused to scrub off. She retrieved her makeup kit to cover up the blemishes. Tomorrow she would look for a stronger cleaner for her skin. I mean, if you want to rot it quicker. Sweetheart, could you pass the salt to your brother? He looks like he needs some. The daughter hesitated. But he's... Okay. I appreciate you being so well-behaved since your brother's injury. It makes mommy's job just a little easier. Don't worry. He will be back to running around with you in no time. Again, the father did not return for dinner. He's gone. It's like, I'm out of here. The daughter was beginning to think that he had run away for good. She did not blame him. But why couldn't he take her away with him? As the women were cleaning up, the door flung open. It was father. The girl's nose crinkled at the heavy liquor smell coming from him. I told you! Five bottles! And balls as in the entire stash of alcohol at the bar. At five different bars. <sighs> um. Head and bed. No Darnian. It took you long enough. I'm not happy. Our son needs you right now. My son needs a grave. I don't want to hear you, nagging woman. 
The daughter sprinted into her room before she became caught in the crossfire. She could already hear the screaming in the parents' bedroom. Knowing her mother, this could take hours. Like the several days before, the siblings found themselves staring at each other in the bed. It was becoming tough to look at him. The foulness of his scent made her eyes burn, like moldy salami. She failed to suppress a tremble as she noticed the white fuzz growing in the vegetable's eyes. Oh yeah, you're right. She felt nothing but sympathy for the corpse. He deserved a proper burial like Grandpa, not kept around in this desecrated state. Brother, are you in heaven? Are you at peace right now? No! I got ran over! Are you kidding me with a pumpkin? The entire family was keeping themselves in the living room. The father was reading a newspaper, the daughter playing with Jacks, the son sitting silently in the corner, and the mother frantically running around spraying as much bug spray as she could. Ugh, there are flies everywhere! I'm so sick of their buzzing! I'm worried that all the noise is bothering our son. He needs as much sleep as possible to recover. Dear, do you think something went bad in the pantry? If you help me move some boxes, I can clean it out today. Honey, our son went bad. Dear, are you listening? The father threw his newspaper on the floor. I'm tired of playing for ten. You're taking this too far. What do you mean? I said I'm disposing of his body. Properly. I am digging his grave, and you will not stop me. Without hesitation, he left the room and turned with a shovel. He grabbed the wheelchair. The mother also latched onto it, pulling it to her side with all her might. Left and right, the bloated body was jostled between the parents, almost ready to topple over out of its seat. No! Leave him alone! You can't keep him like this! Yes, I can! He's our son! Stop scaring him! For heaven's sake, he's green and smells like sewage! Does that sound normal to you? The wife should always listen to the husband. Don't be foolish. Once he's buried in the pumpkin patch, we shall never speak of this again. A couple inches to the right and that china glass would have blinded him. Don't you dare take him away from me! Her outburst was completely uncharistic to the father and daughter, and it shocked them. Who or what had possessed the mother? Please, we can get you some help. You're being hysterical. The mother opened a nearby drawer and grabbed a large knife. She was a good cook and knew her cutlery well. The woman looked terrified, shakily holding that knife, but wholly prepared to strike in defense. I will die before even letting my children get in harm's way. You're a danger to us. I'll do it. I'm not afraid to do it. The father dropped the shovel backing slowly away until he was trapped against the wall. Unfortunately for him, the mother closed the distance between the two. That's right. You were the one who ran him over in the first place, so don't you dare lay another finger on his head, murderer! I've been following you every order, but look where that's gotten us. For the sake of our children, I think it's time you started listening to me. We're going to continue taking care of our son, because he had a nasty accident and needs our help. Do you understand? Ugh. Uh, the wife raised a knife at his face. I said, do you understand? Yes, yes, I understand. Don't hurt me. Good. Now we're going to have ourselves a nice little dinner. Any objections? The room stayed silent. Mother's demeanor became gentler, but she continued to grip that knife as if her life depended on it. I'm glad. Sweetheart, please follow Mommy and help her out. We're returning your brother to the bedroom. I think things are a little too loud for him around here. You two have been so inconsiderate. Day 7 <coughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> unwrap it, unwrap it already! Wow, bike! Thank you! Sure thing, sport. How about we break it in after the party? Yes, please. This is the best day ever, else I'm dead. Can I ride it too? No way! You still need training wheels. Mom, he's being mean. Don't get too rowdy. You still have to unwrap the last of your presents. Who else wants another slice of cake? Me. Are you mad at Mom and Daddy for hurting you? Ah, oh, thank goodness. 
I feel so relieved. I always tell your daddy to be more careful when he's driving, but he never listens. The mother picked out another maggot and tossed it into a bin. It was starting to overflow. At least she was making progress removing the squirming creatures. I know. That feels much better, doesn't it? She was a patient woman. His healing process shouldn't take much longer. I was a little late today waking up. Please get dressed as soon as possible. Ball after ball, the mother used her aerosol freshener to help air out the room. Fwack! With her other hand, she squashed a scuttling beetle. By now, she was certain that something went bad in the pantry for there to be such a large bug infestation. As much as she wasn't looking forward to it, she may have to clean out the entire pantry. She's meant to fly who was resting on top of her son's head. Oh my! I'm sorry for using the fly sword on you. Did that hurt? Not as much as being run over. While the mother was hard at work cleaning the house, the daughter nowadays avoided going inside as much as possible. Every day when she came home, her brother's body would be happily greeting her. She just couldn't handle the rotting sights and smells anymore. The smells of, it, of his exudation was overpowering. Green and brown juices dripped from his head and soaked his clothes. It wasn't running meat or spoiled milk anymore. It was death. No kids wanted to be near her either. In the corner of her eye, she could see them gag and hold her noses, as if she was the deceased one herself. Hmm. Are oh, you sure don't want to stay with me a little longer? Uh, I can't. I have to get back home to my wife. But you've been looking so stressed recently. Is everything okay at home? The father let out a deep sigh. Not particularly. I think my marriage is falling apart, along with my son's body. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. I haven't been treated the best recently. My wife has been so demanding. Screaming at me for the littlest of things. She's turning around like she wears the pants around the house now. I can't get any peace and quiet in my own home. I... I need to show her who's boss. She can't keep pushing me around like this. I'm a man for God's sake. I wish you luck. You can always keep crawling back to me to lick your wounds. Where have you been? It's rather late. Work. Huh. Our son was asking about you today because you filled the show up for supper again. You're worrying him sick. Every single day you talk about that blasted son. I don't like how you... You do your job and make the money. I take care of the house and kids. Why is it so hard for you to understand? Yet you call me for the... Sh he was humiliated how quickly she shut him down. At least she couldn't dictate his actions outside of the home. He berated himself for his cowardice. Day 14. And those flies are really starting. Darling, I'm sorry that dinner was a little rushed. Taking care of your brother was consuming most of my day today. It was worse than rushed. More like she threw ram ingredients, inedible or not, into a pot. This past week, it seemed that most of her meals were ending this similar fate. The daughter poked a semi-charred apple with her fork. Ah! There was a maggot. A maggot living in her food. Oh my. What have I told you about not washing your hands before you eat? You need to wash them more frequently. Were you playing outside? Stop it already! How can you two continue pretending everything is normal? Dear, tell her that everything is normal. The farmer looked like he was in a trance, perfectly chewing his food without a care in the world. Did the art of the dad change a little? It might have. Listen to your mother more. She is correct. It's not true. Why do you insist on talking back? You're a child. You don't understand anything. Treat your parents with some respect. The same par parents that ran over your brother and now stuffed his body in the house with a pumpkin on its head. The murmur began to spoon-feed the body again, the spoon's contents also hardly containing maggots. A milk-white maggot slipped from the softening pumpkin head and landed onto the spoon, oblivious to the mother. Mmm, yummy, isn't it? Oh god, she was going to retch. 
I'm going to my room. As you should. No supper for the rest of the night. The daughter was forced to cart the body back into their bedroom, making sure to avoid touching his slimy body as little as possible. His abdomen, distended beyond belief, was strained to rip through his clothes. The gorging insects were taken delight in how he was a balloon ready to pop. Who knew what putrid horrors were trapped inside him? The girl fell to her knees, weeping. Mother kept saying everything was fine, but of course it wasn't. What wouldn't she give to return to normalcy? Whatever did she do to deserve this torture? If, if only she and her brother hadn't been roughhousing when the car came. When she looked up, the body was now facing away from her, giving her some semblance of privacy during her grief. Or was he always facing that way? She couldn't remember. F thank you. Of course there would be no response, yet she still felt the urge to say something. I miss you, brother. I miss you so much. Day 17. School. Now. Yep, that body is... just about gone. Another day, another garbage bag full of empty bug spray. The mother dabbed away any leakage from the son's body. Alongside some flaky adipose here. It was too much of a mess moving him in and out of the wheelchair anymore. Not to mention ruining her upholstery. So she might as well clean him where he sat. You need to take care of yourself more. The last time I sponge bathed you was when you were a wee baby. Not to say you're not still mommy's little baby. She was frustrated of how many rags it took to maintain her son's cleanliness. He was slowly making his way through his, her favorite dish rags. The pelican paired one she was using was soaked with murky browns and greens. Her poor pumpkin seemed to be covered in a greasy black substance. It wasn't his job to clean the stovetop. The mother dabbed her heart against his arm, accidentally scraping off a small section of skin. She groaned with more fluid oozed from the spot. Your sister's been refusing help of laundry. Can you believe it? I wish she was as well behaved as you. No one else wants to spend time with dear old mom. I wonder why. <laughs> That's why you've always been mommy's favorite. Give me a second, I'll be right back. Hello, yes, this is the mother. What? My daughter said that? About that, I think a raccoon died in the walls. We're going to have to get it looked at. Yeah, yeah, she's just overreacting. Children have such vivid imaginations. Her fist clenched. That girl. Because the school bus was long gone, the mother had to drive to school to pick her up. They drove back in silence with the daughter awkwardly fidgeting. The mother looked like she was about to blow a gasket. Okay, explain yourself. Your teacher said that you were insistent on not returning home because there's a corpse in our house. Do you know how embarrassed I was? But, but it's true. There are insects crawling all over him in the house. I don't know how much more I can take. I feel so sick. Girl, go to your neighbors. The mother glanced at the body. What's that, darling? She's being quite rude. Yes, I agree with you. Mom, he's dead. He'll never respond. What do we do something about? It's awful living here. What a horrible thing to say about your brother. I thought I'd raise you better than that. Everything has gone downhill since he died. You don't do my hair bow anymore. The food is raw. Daddy barely ever comes home and I can't stand all the smell. I know you're still grieving. But when will you ever get it for your thick head? The mother's eyes widened at the reddening of her hand, and her weeping daughter on the floor. The woman had spanked both of her children for misbehaving before, but she had never stricken their faces. You... you hit me. Sweetie, I didn't mean it. I don't know what came a hold of me. You know I'm so stressed from taking care of your brother. I don't know who you are anymore, but you're not my mom. I hate you. Darling. No. You can't hide this anymore. I'm telling the police. But you and my brother. I run first, then announce what you're gonna do. She sprinted to the phone, but the mother grabbed her by the hair. Pain seared through the, the girl's body. You insolent child! After everything I've done for you! It hurts, mother, it hurts! You're gonna rip my scalp off! A preteen girl had no physical power for a fully grown woman. The daughter was dragged across the wood floor, using all of her strength to attempt to release herself. When the mother reached the children's bedroom, she threw the girl inside. The door locked. 
Um, I have a window. Let me out. I'm begging you. Ah, uh, mommy is so tired. The poor wretched girl banged and banged again on the door. To no avail. The mother wasn't even listening to her. And I'm sure you're tired of the arguing as well. Daddy disagreed for a while, but he eventually learned that mommy always knows best. All we have to do is wait a bit longer until your brother heals up. You believe mommy, don't you? You need to tell your father about this. You will not be pleased. No, I'm sorry. If you were truly sorry, you would have been a better sister. You could be that now. That night, the daughter had a nightmare. Your entire life is a nightmare. Maggots covered every square inch of her body, twisting and writhing to find any way to burrow deeper inside. She would have screamed if her mouth wasn't equally stuffed with maggots. The white worm slivered across the remains of her tongue, bashing against the walls of her pumpkin head, trying to escape. She could feel their tiny mouths eating away at her, bite by bite. Hello there, my sweet baby boy. I was just checking up on you. Did I disturb your sleep? No. She wasn't her brother. Leave her alone. You haven't fallen asleep yet. Are you having trouble? I can read you a bedtime story if you'd like. Which one do you want to hear? If I remember correctly, the ugly duckling was your favorite. She sat down next to the daughter, unaware of the slimy, squirming creatures crawling the way out to the hem of her dress. Buzzing blowflies danced above the two. And she began to read. The air was suffocating. Good night. May you have sweet dreams. She kissed the pumpkin. Dark slime clung to her lips from her sweet goodnight smooch. The room fell into darkness, leaving the daughter alone, coughing and gagging into the night. Day 20 Yes, ma'am, my daughter is at home too. The kids' measles have gone pretty bad, but they should be returned to school any day now. Yes, of course, I've been homeschooling them in the meantime. What do you think I've been doing this entire time? Threatening your family? My babies will be back when they're ready. Not a day sooner. You can stop calling now. The mother was exhausted from the incessant phone calls. Just yesterday, the electric company had friend to shut down the power if the bills weren't paid. But she knew she had paid them. No, the dad's taking the money. The son's skin looked even worse today. Concerningly worse. His skin was, soaked, was a soaked paper towel, tearing just as easily. The mother brought out more of her makeup kit, ready to powder all the putrefaction. Though unlike her previous attempts, her son's skin refused to obey. Yeah, I think it's a dead body. It's not going to really obey or do anything except rot. Or dry out, depending on the context. Like a silk glove, the skin slipped off, landing sadly onto the ground. The ease of such a feat shocked her. Then more, and more, until he was resembling some blood lizard emerging from his molt. With each opening, a drip of black stew-like goo kept trickling down his limbs. No, 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 don't do this. She pressed her hands against him to hamper any fervor, slowing. In retaliation, a geyser of thick fluid spurt from his torso, accompanied by air too foul to describe. Yep, the bacteria is doing its job. Finally, the stream of bodily deliquesce came to rest. The child in front of her was partially deflated, sagging fervor into his soaked seat. This wasn't good. Why wouldn't her husband take their child to the hospital? The mother was damn near ready to herself. But she knew the jostling from the trip would make things worse. Even the lightest touch of her hands was not safe anymore. Tears welled in her eyes. What more could she do? On the contrary, the son's face was twisted into some relieved grin. A tired woman looked down. Her dress's hem was dyed in a sort of dark fluid. Touching her dress only fervor coated her hands in the mucus. After the mother spent the rest of the day cleaning the mess, she bathed and went to bed. On day 22, surprise has gone on this long. Anytime the daughter's door was unlocked, it was to slip in food. The timing was irregular, making it difficult to calculate when she would escape. I keep telling you, just smash that window. She could hardly eat the food anyway. Not one meal passed without a wiggling maggot hiding inside. Being trapped in this festering room made her entire body itch. She brushed off a hungry fly crawling on her arm. Their usual food source had been relocated to the living room for several days now, but they were more than happy to bother her. The daughter remembered Job, 
a figure from the Bible. Despite all the suffering and adversity he was given, he never gave up hope and was rewarded in the end. She could make it through this too. One power the daughter had over her mother was retaining her wits. The police are here. But why? The mother glanced at the rooms behind her. Hide him and make sure the police don't hear the children. Good afternoon, officers. What business do you have here? Excuse me, ma'am. We were called here today because of a smell complaint. One of your neighbors isn't happy. Yes, sirs. Everything is all right. We've been having all sorts of pest problems and have been doing everything we can to clean them out. Insects in the pantry, raccoons in the walls. It's all a living nightmare. View! I sure can smell it. Do you have a stinky cheese factory hidden in there? The three awkwardly chuckled. The caller also mentioned that your son hasn't been seen in a while. Yes, it's a case of the measles. I'm afraid he hasn't been improving as quickly as I'd hoped. I've been so weary. Everything seems to be piling up. My husband keeps saying he doesn't have time to help. He's always working. The mother wiped her eyes as the policemen lowered their hats to their chests. Oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. We won't bother you anymore. Our best wishes for your son getting better. Thank you. You're too kind. I'll be sure to tell him. Mm -hmm. The daughter's mouth was gagged with an old sock. Behind her, her father was tying her arms with rope. Why are you an accomplice to this? You can end this all now! The man had little idea how to do it, and was trying to barbarically force the limbs into a position they shouldn't go. Your mother cares about us, you know that, don't you? You can see how much she loves your brother. She'll come around, and then we can go back to being a family. Why did her father keep listening to that monster? The daughter let out a muffled wail. Finally, the man turned to stare at her. Instead of a cold glare, he looked pain from heartbreak. He placed what might have been a loving hand on her shoulder, but he seemed too lost to tell. Yes, yes, that's it. She was his child, remember? Surely he realized what he was doing to her. Gl Any trace of empathy vanished when he heard the returning high heels of mother. What took you so long? Come with me to the entrance. Mm -hmm. Her arms were bright red from struggling against the rope. No, don't leave her. On the opposite side of the room, the son's untied body was mocking her. A large section of hand ligament and muscle dribbled into the wheelchair seat. Eventually, police drove away. The parents did not return to unbind her. Was it because they forgot? Or did they know she would attempt to escape again? Day 25. Don't mean there are flies anymore. But the father and mother were staring at the black limb on the floor. It was soft and delicate, like wet tissue paper. Likewise, the child was rapidly falling apart. His mushy pumpkin head barely attaching to the neck. I... I thought after receiving his new head, he would be recovering. But every day he gets worse and worse. What's wrong? What should we do? That's it. What if we replace the body too? Wait, what? His body wasn't compatible with the head, so we should find a new body that is. The neighbor's son. They're the same age. What? Bring the child here tonight. And don't keep me waiting. Our son needs his body more than our brat does. The daughter was awoken by the muffled sounds of struggling and whimpering. What was going on? A child's scream in the basement answered her question. Would she be next? The daughter did the only thing she could think of. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Footsteps were closer to her bedroom. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Your mother wants to see you. No! No! There was an unavied person in the basement, and he was dead. He was fresh, and the public on his head was even fresher. Her parents really did kill someone. In the corner, her brother's body was callously cast aside. Look, darling, look. Your brother is all better now. Aren't you happy? You don't have to worry anymore. Okay, now they really have to, like, investigate. Because, like, one kid hasn't been seen for, like, a month, and the other one goes missing... The mother stepped towards the daughter, completely drenched in blood. The daughter wanted to vomit, but the father held her still, unable to run away from her maniacal matriarch. Ah, oh, I'm so glad you agree. Things will finally go back to normal. Don't forget, 
You have school to borrow, so you can take your brother with you. She was prancing around the wheelchair, beyond proud of her newest work. Adara knew that within a month, the body would finish rotting, and all the torment would begin anew. While the mother spoke, the new corpse was already turning pale. I was so busy preparing for today that I completely forgot about dinner. It may be the middle of the night, but how about we have ourselves a celebratory meal? Fit for a whole family. The police. And this soon. You absolutely good for nothing, husband! I should have done it myself! The father simply bowed his head. You've always been so oafish, and thanks to you, you've now rooted for all of us. Do not let them down here. They'll take our son away from us. The parents were distracted. Now was her chance. As hard as she could, the daughter bit down on her father's hand, drawing deep blood. He jumped back as the girl burst from his arms and beelined up the stairs. You better rethink that right now. Whoa! The mother had her butcher knife around the other child's neck. If you leave us, I'll kill him. You wouldn't want to be responsible for your brother's death again, would you? That would make mommy very sad. I don't think you know what a fret is. I'm not afraid to do it. Don't take another step. For a split second, the daughter almost pitied her mother. Throughout this entire month, the mother kept denying and making excuses. Completely delusional that nothing was wrong with her other child. Even now, she was treating this decapitated corpse like a hostage with value. Huh? What's that, darling? You want me to kill her instead? That does make sense. I've always loved you more anyway. Yeah, yeah, you know, just keep running. The other woman faced her daughter, her knife already poised for attack. She... she wasn't kidding. Sweetheart, listen to your mother. Come down these stairs right now. You've already caused her enough trouble. The daughter was so close to escaping, but her legs refused to move. Gloria. Her heart was ready to burst out of her chest. She would know that voice anywhere. Brother? In the corner room, a figure turned its... No. His pitiful head to face her. But how? He was supposed to be dead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry everything turned out this way. It wasn't your fault. Gloria, you need to run now. And with those last words, his body collapsed back to the floor, bursting into blackened sludge. Now he was truly gone. That closure was just what she needed. With no more time to spare, the daughter gritted her teeth and sprang up the rest of the stairs. Out of the house, she barreled into the policeman's arms. The mother's howling was already far in the distance. Hey, be careful! That's a child! Are you hurt? What is your name? It had been so long since the last time she touched a warm human being. Her resilience was finally rewarded. Don't worry, young lady. I'll take care of this. You're safe now. This must be like a little, like, prequel kind of scene. You cover the seeds with dirt, sprinkle some water every so often, and they'll all be ripe for picking in October. Wow, that's so cool. What's the biggest pumpkin you've ever grown? Hard to say, maybe. The size of our car. No way, Daddy, you're such a liar. Actually, it's possible. The father chuckled. But I have won a blue ribbon at the state fair before. You should have seen the look on your mother's face. Having fun out there? Yeah, Daddy is showing us how to grow crops. Dinner is on the table. You three better hurry or it'll get cold. Last one in is a rotten egg. Or a rotten sun. Wait up, you had a head start. Daddy, why are you running too? Your legs are longer, it's not fair. The mother put up a valiant struggle in staying with her deceased victims. But she was eventually dragged away, kicking and screaming. Ultimately, she was institutionalized. The father was charged with kidnapping and shortly afterwards committed suicide in prison. No one would mourn his death. With no family left to claim guardianship over the daughter, she was simply shipped to the nearest orphanage. For the longest time, this tragedy became the talk of the town. Who could have known that the quiet but kind-hearted family were host to monsters? 
It was rather lonesome in the orphanage. No matter how many times the daughter bathed herself, fellow children constantly remarked about her repugnant smell. She couldn't tell if it was because they were mocking, or if the girl could truly never wash away the scent of death from her house. Oh, you poor child. I can't begin to imagine your pain. Don't worry. We'll find a good family to take care of you. At least the nuns were kind enough to ignore her smell. She was able to make friends with one of the older nuns, who was well known throughout the place for her baking skills. I baked a nice pumpkin pie today. Would you like a piece? <laughs> Shoo, you silly fly. This pie is not for you. I'm sorry they're such a nuisance. The flies have been unusually bold recently. I don't know why. If you would like, I can cut another slice of pie for you. Toss it, please. I'm not hungry. Are you sure? I'm begging you, I can't bear to look at it anymore. As you wish, my dear. Why would you serve a pumpkin pie? Like, you know the context of the story. You know, they would have been told, like, oh, yeah, this is the girl that, um, her parents, you know, were murderers. They used pumpkins. Let's see, there's an afterword. Thank you for stomaching for Pumpkin Eater. Countless hours of research has been making this visual novel as scientifically accurate as possible. Death is an unavoidable process and may be sad, but everything must come to an end one day. And through decomposition, many poor forms of life can spring forth. Flies and beetles have a good home for their young. Plants thrive on the nitrogen and carbon that our body releases. Though many shows delve into the forensic science, in the application of science to crime and law, very few showcase a less than fresh body. Even the movie Psycho, a concept similar to ours where the antagonist believes his mother's corpse is still alive, was only shown as mummified skeleton. Decomposition is an understandably gruesome subject that our team thought would be interesting to tackle. Yeah, sounds like I mean like a thing about Nurgle. Nurgle from Warhammer, by the way, not any of her thing. Understanding how the human body rots is still a heavily studied field to this day. There are many factors that contribute to how fast the body decomposes, such as temperature, weather, scavengers, even how much surface area the body is exposed. It can take as quick as... I keep accidentally, like, popping it back up. Where was I? There we go. It can take as quick as two weeks, or as much as years. For our store, we had to assume average room temperature, low humidity, constant disturbance due to the mother, and some prolonged contact with moisture on the second day. Though the mother constantly sprayed bug spray to prevent the pesky insects from getting inside the house, there was still plenty of access for flies and microbes to feast upon the son's body, I mean mainly from the stomach. The story takes place over 25 days, but the parents had to keep the body it would have skeletonized within 50 days. Because of the various stages of decomposition, the sun also went through many visual changes as the story progressed. Though relatively normal at first, he becomes discolored, bloats, and eventually falls apart in a mushy mess. If we had more time, as this was created from one month jam, we would have drawn more subtle visual variations to his body. Not only did we want to focus on decomposing body, we also wanted to write about the family's strained relationship over the month. We were very inspired by Resident Evil 7's Baker family and the Amityville Horror Lutz's family. Both series involved an originally loving family that eventually became insane due to various events. Well, the Resident Evil 7 family kind of got infected by a monster, but, you know, a little different. We wanted to avoid supernatural elements, so as scientific accuracy was our biggest priority. Public Eater is definitely taboo and niche due to the nature of decomposition, and we do believe would make a good exploitive film. If you're reading this, please give us a call because I have a story for you. Special thanks to Science Direct and Documenting Reality for supplying us with our references. Signing off. Okay, that's the afterword. Oh, they had even a timeline. What? Hmm, scrolling doesn't work on. Might be a little bit. There it goes. Day zero, death of a son. Day one, end of Rick and Mortis. Day three, marbling, color patterns, blowfly appears. Day five, body starts to bloat in the abdomen. Day seven, blowfly maggots. Have hatched, skin is blistering and peeling, hair and nails fall out. Day 10, smell becomes worse. Texture says like beetles and mites. Day 14, skin turns black, organs almost liquefied. Day 18, bloat slowly disappears through the body collapse. Day 20, tissue softening and liquefying. Day 20, fermentation. Yeah, I see the cheesy smell. Day 24, ligaments soften. Day 25, advanced decay nearing the end. Decomposition is so bad, the bone becomes visible and limbs start separating. Yeah, here's the, like, the clear art of the body. Oh, they all have a glossary. I'm not gonna bother reading this. I'm just gonna kind of sc scroll slowly through it. If you find anything interesting, you're welcome to just pause the video.
Nice little detail. And then credits. So that's it for Pumpkin Eater. This story kind of reminded me of something. It's like old horror. And I don't mean horror games. I mean just like actual like literature. And there's been some, obviously some real life events where this has gone down. Uh, usually they're actually better at preserving the bodies than the parents were here. But the old horror subject and then the, the kind of like watercolor kind of sketch style, it made me think of like, like a 90s horror book, like uh, something that you maybe would read to a teenager. That little era where you had like somewhat cutesy or drawn horror novels, but that still had like serious subjects or kind of scary things in them. That's the vibe I got. Uh, there is no choices, it, you know, it's a linear story. It is essentially just a, a visual novel or a uh, kind of a sound novel of sorts. So we have to create it on a story sense, and story sense is actually very good. It is not a new subject, like I said, there has been real life events like this, but the mother is creepy, the events are kind of like ghastly and everything, and the style works with it. If I had to give it any criticism, and I think even the um, the afterward might have mentioned something vaguely about that, is that the, the father seemingly kind of gives in pretty fast, and you would think there'd be like a little more conflict there. A lot of his conflict seems to kind of go off screen. We're, we're, we're stuck to the daughter's perspective, except for a few times. And the psychology of the father would be relatively interesting. We, like I said, we just get a glimpse where he's going out with another woman and like drinking along. But see a little bit more of him coping with the situation would have been great. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play Pumpkin Ear. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.